Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for February 6th, 2022. For the first time in forever, it appears that the United States will be in a bit of a break period. Now, if you watched my video on Friday night, I was talking about how long this period would most likely go on for before our next significant major storm. If you want to see my original prediction for that video, please be sure to click at the top right hand corner. But otherwise, we're going to get into what happens in between that massive gap here today. And we have some storms to talk about here. And before we get into all of that, let's figure out what's happening currently in the atmosphere here with the current satellite imagery. And we can see a couple things. First, we can see a massive trough that's dipping on through here. Massive long wave trough that is extending throughout much of the United States. And this huge ridge here creating a lot of clockwise flow as well. And that high pressure system is really going to be the reason as to why the United States isn't really going to get a whole lot. Until that high pressure system moves off further to the east, we can anticipate more low pressure systems and more ridges to kind of come across as an Alberta clipper and bring a lot of snow across much of areas like the northern United States heading off into the northeast. Unless if there is a couple of low pressure systems that do develop off of the coast from those elongated troughs and actually ride up the coastline, which we do have a couple of those here to talk about with the weather models. So we're going to take a look at the North American model here just to figure out as to what exactly could happen for the most part. And as I play this on through, you can see there's a lot of snow for portions of Quebec, Ontario and portions of the Great Lakes, as well as that new clipper system that's going to move on through, bringing a lot of snow elongated with all that stuff. You can also see a new developing system that's off of the coast of the United States and this could potentially bring some wintry precipitation for portions of the mid-Atlantic into the northeast coupling with that elongated trough that I was talking about so as we play this on through you can see how there is expected to be more and more snow for portions of northern New England a lot of rain for portions of Cape Cod heading on further south maybe some residual snow squalls that will continue to move on through and then we also have another band of snow from another clipper that's going to continue to push on through into portions of Ontario and the northern Midwest. And that's just going to continue to be the case for the most part here. If we zoom in here towards the east coast to get some timings here specifically, you can see a lot of snow becomes sporadic towards portions of Sunday night from 7 to 8 o'clock. That'll continue to be the case all the way through until Monday morning. And then the freezing rain and wintry precipitation doesn't start actually firing off here until after midnight across portions of the Delmarva Peninsula and towards the I-95 corridor near Baltimore, Washington. That's going to continue to be the case as that rises further and further to the north. And maybe even areas here towards portions of southern New England could get some snow in the early morning hours. But by the time it gets to the afternoon hours, it's going to be really heavy snow for the most part across portions of southern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And that'll begin to elongate as that moves on through into the evening and overnight hours of Monday into Tuesday. Now that is expected to continue to move on through all the way into Tuesday and into the afternoon hours of that day as well, bringing some light snow showers into the evening hours as well. But otherwise, that's when it really starts to seed and that'll begin to start to move on through in that general vicinity. Now, just for comparison here, we're gonna take a look at two different other models that are going to try and help us forecast as to what could potentially happen for this event here within the short time period. We have the Euro on the left and we have the GFS on the right and we'll play this out here forward. Of course, as I said, the timing is above me in Eastern and you can see how the Euro actually has a bit of snow for the Appalachian into the Shenandoah Mountains. So watch out for that. There could potentially be some snow around the afternoon hours of Monday heading off into the evening hours as well, elongated with the chance for snow into portions of New England from this system as well. So this will continue to be a factor as this moves on through. You have a developing low pressure system that finally starts to really power on. And then Nova Scotia and New Brunswick up here, you guys could get some not only heavy snow showers, maybe even heavy rain showers, but you can also get a lot of strong damaging winds here, especially if you're on the eastern side of that, because this low pressure system is going to be strengthening as this moves on through. I know you guys may be a little bit used to those wind storms as this passes on through, but still something to keep in mind as this moves about on Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening. And this is expected to continue to move on through. You can see a lot of residual snow showers across the area before it finally moves off 
by the time we get towards Wednesday evening. But by the time it gets to Wednesday morning in general, that's when your snow showers and your actual totals over an hour will start to diminish as well. So if we take a look at the snow totals here from the North American model, you can see a lot of it is mainly centralized over portions of the northeastern United States, as well as into portions of the New Brunswick area. Not really a whole lot for Nova Scotia, according to this model here. And the higher elevations over here, you guys could potentially anticipate about five to eight inches, maybe even a foot of snow in some spots. But once you start getting closer and closer towards the coast and even further and further inland past much of those mountain ranges, you guys could probably anticipate about three to five inches of snow, maybe even one to three as you head towards portions of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. But that's at the absolute maximum, all right? You guys could probably barely see any snow at best. And then of course at worst is the one to three inches possible. Now, if we go back to the Euro and the GFS here for comparison, you can see the Euro paints a very different picture with a lot more widespread snow here, especially across New Brunswick, maybe even portions of Northeastern Nova Scotia. But the GFS, however, mainly takes it a lot further towards the North and East and mainly across open waters with the exception of a few islands off in that general vicinity. So it's just definitely one of those things where we're gonna have to continue to watch out for. But the big area that I think has the most consistency here is areas along southern to southwestern portions of Maine heading off into portions of southern New Hampshire. That is where you guys could more likely get some snow, specifically into portions of Manchester, Augusta, maybe even in portions of Portland and Bangor. You guys could probably get a lot of snow showers in your general vicinity as well. So just something to keep in mind as this first winter storm passes on through, if this even is classified as a winter storm. Now past that event, you can see your clipper that we were talking about that is starting to move on through. Of course, the GFS actually takes it a little bit further south and the Euro takes it a lot further north towards the Hudson Bay. That'll actually push on through into portions of Ontario and Quebec from Wednesday into Thursday, and that'll bring some snow across much of the general area. But then we have a new clipper that's gonna be moving on through into portions of Alberta and Saskatchewan. That is basically going to make a lot of snow and freezing rain across some of those general vicinity. And that is gonna continue to move on through and become another clipper. Notice how, notice the pattern here, guys. All right, most of the low pressure systems are kind of riding the northern portions of the United States. It's really not gonna be a whole lot of activity for portions of the deep south and to the southeast. Even a portions of the west, you guys aren't really getting a whole lot as well. So it's just a continuous pattern here that is going to take place all the way through. We're at the 11th year of February. And this continues to be the same pattern. Big snowstorm that continues to move on through into portions of the Great Lakes heading off towards the northeast as well as Ontario, Quebec. Another system that is expected to move on through. But then this is when things get really interesting here, all right? As the pattern starts to shift, you can start to see how things begin to start to congeal here along portions of the central United States. You see how there's a lot of precipitation that is expected to form here. And the big reason behind all of that is because if we take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear here to give us a perspective as to what the general flow of the atmosphere basically is, I want you guys to pay attention to the ridge that's over here, all right? We talked about how it's creating some clockwise flow here in the beginning of the video, and you can see how the Euro and the GFS actually show that here, but then let's play this on through, and you can see how the general flow of the atmosphere actually changed to where that high pressure system now starts to break and move further towards the east. When you see the high pressure system now move further off and you can see this big ridge now start to develop across the central United States, that's when you know that you're gonna have a low pressure system that's gonna eventually develop and could create some severe weather. It may be significant, it may not be. Of course, we're still a little bit too far out to tell the details as to how significant this potentially could be but there could potentially be something that could occur down here in the south. But on the other hand, because that ridge has moved a lot further east, we can also anticipate potentially a snowstorm that could occur across portions of the northeast as well, sometime within the time period of the end of week two into the week three stages of February, sometime around, I'd say, the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, maybe even 15th, if it continues to lag on that further. But some period around that is when you guys could potentially see some winter weather across portions of the Northeast. But then right after that, sometime around the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 
probably 18th, 19th, 20th, honestly, is uh, when there could potentially be a period of severe weather to where we have a big bowling ball low pressure system. Look at this. Low pressure systems across both of the southwestern portions of the United States here, according to the Euro and the GFS, and this could potentially create some severe weather across the central portions of the United States. So definitely something to watch out here for the most part. But for right now, we're gonna take a look at the temperature anomalies and the actual temperatures here. Of course, the further in, in the red colors you are, the further the above average temperature you're in, and then of course the greens and blues are below average temperatures. So let's take a look at this as this moves on through, and you can see that a lot of warm air is starting to reside across portions of the western to southern portions of Canada, and that is expected to move on through into much of the United States. Look at a lot of these above average temperatures here, except for the one area that you probably wouldn't expect below average temperatures to reside in here in portions of Florida. And so that is going to continue to be the case here as a lot of this warm air is gonna try and push on through and it is going to warm up much of the United States. But then look at this big Arctic air mass up here into portions of Manitoba and Ontario. That is going to surge on through to the south and east. And that is the snowstorm that I was potentially talking about over here for the northeast, potentially a nor'easter in across some of these areas. So definitely something to watch out for. Of course, we have temperatures below 30 degrees on average here within this general time frame. And it's going to be relatively cold for the most part, maybe even single digit temperatures across portions of the Great Lakes into the Midwest. And that is going to continue to move on through. Look at that below 42 degrees on average for your temperatures across portions of the Great Lakes. And that is just a massive cold air invasion here from the Arctic that is just going to basically create a lot of cold weather for much of the areas here along the eastern United States. And that's just definitely something to watch out for before our next wave of above average temperature starts to move on through. And you can see a lot of that warm air that starts to rise into portions of the central plains. That could potentially create, as I said, some severe weather if you do have high enough temperatures within that area. So still something to watch out for. That could potentially change, maybe for better, maybe for worse. Still something that we're gonna continue to update you on this channel as long as you guys stay tuned. So before I end off the video here, I'm gonna show you guys the just general view of North America here from Canada all the way down to the United States and Mexico to show you as to how dry the weather is actually going to be across the area. And a good way to look at that is the different amounts of precipitation that could be possible within some of this time frame. So you can see here across portions of the Northeast into the Great Lakes, Ontario, Quebec, you guys aren't seeing as much snow as you guys typically would, even though it is towards the beginning of February and it's starting to get to that transition period, but it is relatively dry for the most part. You can also see here across portions of the Northwest and towards portions of British Columbia, Vancouver, unless if you're into portions of the higher elevations, you guys don't even really see a whole lot of winter precipitation. At maximum, some of the snowfall amounts could be in upwards of 44 inches and that's, you know, not as high as you would like it to be in some of the higher elevations, although they've had quite a plethora of snow over there, so you guys aren't really complaining all too much. And if we transition over here to the precipitation, you can see a lot of the precipitation is mainly over here in the portions of the Carolinas, southern Texas, extreme southern Texas, as well as in the portions of Florida. Everywhere else in the United States, not really a whole lot, except for up here in the Northwest where you guys could get some storms that could move on through and just basically create some general precipitation of rain or snow. There isn't really a whole lot to mention here for the entire United States. Even if we backtrack just a smidge here, a couple of days, you can see that the only reason why the central portions of the United States get precipitation is because of that potential severe weather threat that's on the horizon. So it goes to show you how dry the weather is going to be more than likely for the next couple of weeks. So I'm telling you all, it's gonna be a little bit boring here for the weather, but whenever stuff does come around, you're not gonna wanna miss it because it could potentially be something significant. But an underrated issue that comes with all of this is going to be the droughts that are going to occur across areas with less than average precipitation. And the thing of it is, is that with those droughts, if you can get some significant amounts of wind shear that moves on through within that general vicinity, wildfires could potentially be an issue as well. So something to keep in mind if you live across some of the areas with little to no precipitation. Now that's not to say that some of these predictions could be wrong. Of course, models are wrong all the time. People are wrong all the time, but 
It's up to me to try and interpret as to what these models could potentially be telling us for the future. And of course, if these predictions do come into fruition, then they, we could potentially see something that is sometime within the time period at the end of week three of February into the beginning of week four of February. So something to watch out for, as I said, 18th, 19th, 20th, maybe the 17th if it's as early as that. But just somewhere along that time period, I am anticipating some severe weather to move on through. So I hope you guys continue to stay tuned with the channel. As I said, if you want to subscribe, please be sure to do so. It is free. And as long as you turn on channel notifications, you'll stay up to date with all the information that I'll provide here on the channel, which some of which could be about life-threatening weather. So you don't want to miss any of that, especially as we get into March, April, and May. That's when activity for severe weather really starts to heighten. And of course, this channel is more known for its severe weather. So if you do want to stay tuned to the channel, please be sure to do so. Also, please be sure to like the video if you did enjoy. It's also a good way to get the information out to as many people as possible on YouTube because that's how YouTube's algorithm works. So if you guys keep hitting that like button, we'll continue to spread this information to as many people as possible and even expand our community as well. And one final thing before I send you all off, please be sure to share this on Facebook and Twitter. Copy the link of the video and share it with as many people as possible so that we can go ahead and get the information out ahead of time. If people know, they can plan accordingly. And then, of course, a lot more people can be safe from that. Now, our give it to me straight question of the day here is, do you think that time period in which I called out for the potential severe weather is going to come into fruition? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll pin the one that has the most interesting answer. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys more than likely on either Tuesday evening or Wednesday evening. But of course, I'll update you guys on my social medias when I can actually upload. So just please be sure to watch out for it. If you want to stay tuned to my social medias, link will also be in the description down below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.